Hi, this is Mark Birch, and today I'm going to be offering analysis and revision of Carol Ann Duffy's Originally. The poem explores aspects of cultural identity and the feelings associated with moving to a new country. The poem's likely to be autobiographical, given Duffy's move from Scotland to England at a young age, as well as the poem featuring in Duffy's collection The Other Country. The theme of change is evident even from the title. The adverb originally denotes a state prior to a change taking place, in this case before moving to another country. Written in three octets, the structure provides a sense of regularity that may be at odds with the theme of change. However, the poem explores the way in which we mitigate the effects of change, conforming to our environments and becoming regular. The lack of a consistent rhythm or rhyme scheme may represent the anxiety of the poetic voice. A sense of insecurity dominates the poem. The first stanza provides a personal account of a child leaving home, although the use of the plural pronoun we, which opens the poem, recognises that she was not the only one profoundly affected in her family. The effects of change are developed further at the beginning of the second stanza, with all universalising the process and providing a more reflective, philosophical stance. The metaphor of the red room refers to the car that the poetic voice leaves her home in. Red connotes anger and danger, representing the feelings of the poetic voice at being taken away from a place where she feels she belongs. The Red Room is a short story by H.G. Wells, so Duffy's use of Red Room as a metaphor could function as an intertextual reference to Wells's story. Wells explores the nature of fear, and an awareness of this could convey the poetic voice's fear as she leaves her home. Duffy describes the journey as quick and chaotic through the phrase, fell through the fields. The verb fell connotes a lack of control as well as speed. Fell also suggests going down, perhaps representing the journey south to England. The journey also seems forced and wrong, given that it takes place through the fields rather than down the roads. This is a journey that seems uncharted from the perspective of the poetic voice. Our mother's singing sounds positive. She may be hopeful regarding this change. However, the enjambment undermines this optimism, introducing our father's name. She's not singing a conventional song, and there is potential ambiguity here. Is she singing the name of the poetic voice's father, or that of God, our father? The poetic voice's upset is silent, while that of her brother's loud, one of them bawling. This hyperbolic verb reinforces the sense of a loss of control. Duffy frequently presents direct speech in italics in her poetry, and here home seems to act as direct speech. It appears as a plaintive cry from the children, with a sense of disconnect or alienation introduced by the way the words are separated by the enjambment and caesura that surround them. The miles that have been left behind are personified as having rushed back, representing the desire for return. The asyndetic list which follows conveys the seemingly endless series of physical features that will be missed by the poetic voice. The need for comfort is evident in the poetic voice staring at her toy and holding its paw. It seems that this is the only source of comfort for the child, generating sympathy for her. There's a sense that this is an old and treasured soft toy with missing eyes. It's blind, mirroring the vacant rooms of the previous sentence. The theme of absence and loss is conveyed through these adjectives. While the first stanza was a very personal account of one leave-taking, Duffy begins the second with the universal claim that all childhood is an emigration. While not all children literally emigrate to another country, they all leave childhood. Duffy uses the metaphor of a physical journey to describe a slow departure from childhood, switching to the second person in order to universalise. She uses the language of isolation and abandonment in leaving you standing and where no one you know stay. The sentence itself is long, symbolising the lengthy process of this kind of change. In contrast, the sudden change is captured in just three words, representing its swiftness. Your accent, wrong, symbolises not fitting in. The sense of wrong can be captured by the use of a minor sentence, the lack of a verb reinforcing a sense of loss and awkwardness. Corners are turning points where the next stage of a journey is unseen. The separation of these corners is structurally captured by the caesura on each side of the word. 
the dislocation of the observer represented by their failure to recognise where they are. The corners seem familiar, but they lead to unimagined estates. The threatening nature of the big boys is reinforced by the alliteration of plosives, complementing the power afforded by their size. Their disgusting behaviour, eating worms and shouting words you don't understand, make them even more threatening. The words could be offensive, not understood because of the poetic voice's age, or they could be dialect terms that alienate the poetic voice. The simile, like a loose tooth, conveys pain and irritation, in this case referring to the parent's anxiety. It's a nagging irritation that's mirrored in the final stanza by the scelf of shame. The final stanza begins with but, introducing another change and introducing a polysyndetic list that captures the many ways in which the original sense of identity is lost. The brother who swallows a slug represents conforming to the expectations of the new culture. He's acting like the big boys who ate worms. The sibilance in seeing your brother swallow a slug could represent both the sliminess of the slug and the mild disgust as the poetic voice recognises the way in which her brother attempts to conform, and not fully successfully. A skelf is a Scottish dialect term for a splinter, indicating that the poetic voice retains some language features of her original culture. The simile of the tongue shedding its skin like a snake represents a casting off of the old self. The tongue here symbolises language, as the poetic voice changes her manner of speech to conform to the new country. The strong use of sibilance could create a hissing sound that emulates the sound of a snake and the sense of danger or evil associated with this. While it may not be evil to use an English accent, there's a sense that the loss of cultural identity associated with conformity is wrong. The long list of things lost, which begins with Do I only think I lost? suggests that the loss of identity is profound. The conclusion of the poem is dominated by interrogatives, conveying the uncertainty of the poetic voice, an existential uncertainty. The rhyme between first space and right place provides a sense of connection, but it's a connection to the past. The past home was the first place that the poetic voice knew, and it felt right. Yet the poem ends with the poetic voice hesitating when asked where she comes from originally. Duffy suggests that the poetic voice experiences a sense of doubt regarding her origins. Does the first place define her identity, or could it be the place where she spent the most time or had the most formative experiences? It can be difficult to identify what originally actually means. Okay, top.